Hello to everyone who is watching this footage. It's Leviathan again. And to start things off, I'd like to apologize for having a bit of a too much prolonged issue when it comes to uh, the podcast, you know. I just want to make sure that I don't want to leave you guys hanging because if I do that too often, it would decrease my popularity and make things hard. So I'm trying my best to make it all fair for all you guys who want to learn more about my creations and such. And even if it means I have to be exhausted or anything, just to give you guys something to examine for your guys' sake and your interests and such. I've got five new character descriptions for characters in my Leviathan universe. Not all of them are heroes, not all of them are villains. It's a toss-up, you know? Five of them. Like, for each video, I believe. Oh, and uh, to start things off is a character in my Leviathan universe known as the Diana Hora, but goes by Audrey. She is 13 feet tall and weighs 3.5 tons. She's a villain and a carnivorous plant, based in the Amazon rainforest, or she could travel to other places if she feels like it. She has two and a half brains for intelligence, which means she has normal intelligence level. She's always willing to consume any meat. She's very deadly and she never worries about flavor. She, her weaknesses is cold weather, fire, and a lack of water. She has massive teeth, an extensive vine system, has bullet immunity, and possesses great strength. She could move herself to any location at a walking speed. She could also sing any tune and eat something at the same time. She has no eyes and no hair. No one really knows for sure where the Diana Hora originated. Some say she was a long-lived, unchanged species of plant that survived since the Carboniferous period, and others say that she was once a little seed that was later exposed by a nuclear plant. Either way, she's willing to use mankind as a food source. She has been known to duke it out against a demonic heroine Dentrony at times. Due to being a plant creature, she doesn't really need any costumes for apparent calculations. Um, her teams could be solitary. She's a member of the Plan Protectors and other villains if she feels like it. She's inspired from the legendary Audrey II of the Little Shop of Horrors. Moving on is a character known as Cheer. Her real name is Clarice Hall. Her height is 5 feet 6 inches to unlimited and weighs 143 pounds to Unlimited. She's a villain and a notable enemy for Colossa, as you could recall from previous footages. She has no particular base. She has three brains and intelligence level, so slightly, slightly above average. She is judgmental, rude, and utterly careless. She will stop at nothing to destroy Colossa, and still considers her as a total nerd. She's extremely deadly to all those who cross her path. Her weaknesses is broken nails, and she also has bad anger issues. She has the same agility, strength, pheromones, and growing capacity as Colossa. Unlike Colossa, she cannot produce nuclear beams and is unable to break the fourth wall. She's also, she also possesses self-resurrection, infinite duplication abilities, and has utter ruthlessness. She has green eyes and auburn colored hair. And this is how she came to be. She used to be a high school cheerleader and unforgivable bully for Shannon Murray who would someday become Colossa. After she got suspended she was captured by a cosmic genius supervillain known as Neuron and was placed inside of a containment chamber that is designed to put her in a coma and make her completely unable to age. Six years later, Neuron had finally received some samples of the DNA of Colossa, along with that of the duplicating superhero Spawn in the multi-limbed character Split. She then injected all of the samples into her bloodstream through her left jugular vein, and then brainwashed Clarice for another attempt to destroy mankind. Cheer had eventually started fighting against Colossa, and she almost won, if not for assistance from the Alpha Gods, for Shannon to turn into Ultralossa, which is her maximum level of power, you know? 
When Neuron was struggling to keep her mind in her control, she became completely outraged. Clarice, cheer, became completely outraged of her. Sorry about that. And stomped on her. Now no longer in her control, Cheers nowadays a freelance professional villain that still has her utterly deep hatred for Colossa. She simply wears her orange and red cheerleader uniform. She's solitary or is able to join other villains. She's inspired from cheerleaders and, in a sense, to Colossa. I apologize if I start doing awkward silences. I'll try my best to, uh, Take out those flukes so that way you wouldn't be left hanging or anything. The next one is a character known as Star Spangler. Her real name is Anna Sam Samuels, and her biological name is Project 217. She has very high weight. She's a hero and a war hero for World War II. She... Her official base is in Washington, D.C. of the default Earth, which, if you think about it, is this Earth that we're on right now. She has four brains and intelligence, which means she's very smart. She's willful, optimistic, and extremely patriotic. She's eagerly determined to keep the U.S. as a completely official nation. She's one of a few Americans to be more powerful than Uncle Sam himself. She can get killed by an axis design drug called Adolf X, which is her weakness. That's the main thing that could kill her. She can change size from as small as a thimble to as big as a skyscraper. She could blast a series of red, white, and blue lasers from her hands that she simply calls her Liberty Beams. She could magically equip any random tool and use it as a weapon. So she basically has a magic satchel for a variety of different, like, mechanic tools, you know, and stuff like that. She also possesses slowed aging, a strong healing factor, uncaring, uncanny repairing skills, and has an iron will from within her soul. You know, her eyes are light blue and her hair is red as orange with curls. You know, curly. Once, a Soviet nuclear factory was creating mutant creatures in an attempt to win World War II. Soon, a group of Japanese aircraft had started dropping bombs on the factory with the only surviving big creation being Project 217. It was then transported to Washington, D.C., where the child was adopted by the local mechanic named Bernie Samuels. When she rapidly aged into going to her early 20s, Anna witnessed her father being killed by a band of Nazis, and the event awoke her uncanny powers and defeated them for payback. Realizing her new abilities, Anna decided to use them to destroy Hitler in his attempt to conquer the planet. Weeks after winning that intense war, however, she was consumed by a mysterious cloud of smog that made her vanish, and she was eventually recovered when floating to a Florida beach many years later. She is nowadays considered as a living legend and is still determined to protect her country from any threat. She simply wears blue overalls, a pinkish undershirt, a large pair of brown leather boots, and a cap that matches her overalls. She is solitary, leads her own superhero team called the Patriots 3, and other heroes. For the record, the Patriots 3 are like, like a, a team of three, like Stars and Stripes honoring individuals, you know? She's inspired from Rosie the Riveter as some might guess from how capable she is, you know? The next character is Gymoscoricus. Her real name is Queen Susina, Susan Diana Amazonicus. She is 9 feet 6 inches tall, but could go to 5,000 feet, weighing a full ton to 864,000 tons. She's a hero in the recent queen of a island called Gynarmica, which is populated with the uh, Gynarmicans, which are like four-armed Amazonian warriors, which that island is located somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, like in the center area. She has five brains for intelligence. She is an extreme lover of violence, and she and her Gynarmican warriors 
will do anything to worship the creator of their island goddess. She is truly a world champion of any video game that features fighting and or women. For, you know, in terms of girl power. She also has an unnaturally strong passion for coffee. She is an extremely powerful and bloodthirsty leader. She'll torture any villain, slaughter them, and then eat the entire carcass. If you are a villain and do anything that amuses her, then she would trust you and let you live. But it's extremely rare for any villain to encounter her and live to tell the tale. She is an expert war strategist, wields a variety of weapons, possesses war arms, has immense strength, and consumes the flesh and blood of her defeated enemies, and also has some mass alteration. Her eyes are deep blue and her hair is platinum white in varied styles and lengths. Susanna is the legendary Gymoscoricus, which means Mighty Man Saver, and the reason Queen of Gynarmica, you know, an island located within the center of the Pacific Ocean. The island always worships the ruler of the Alpha Gods, Goddess, who also granted Susanna with the ability to grow to Tauren Sison since she was six years old. They are warring with a terrorist island called Callistica, since their ruler, Queen Gaphilixac, had killed the mother of Susanna at an early age. Her Gynarmican armies were also controlled by Commanderette Tafora Kael'thun, or simply the Herikashiks, who was also a guardian for Susanna when her mother died, since her mother was her greatest friend. Recently, Gynarmican had learned the existence of mankind and would do anything to protect both her people and humanity. She either wears a royal dress or a variety of skivvies. She has her own, like, uh, attire that she feels would be intended for such, you know? She's solitary. She can command her vast armies of Gynarmicans. Or she could just lead the Avenging League, which is basically like all the superhero teams that are all interconnected, like a spider web, how it's all interconnected. All together will be to the main source known as the Avenging League. She's inspired from Gynormica from Monsters vs. Aliens, and also inspired from Wonder Woman, in a sense. I'm sorry if you guys are having a hard time keeping up with what I'm saying. I'm trying my best to stay efficient for you guys. At least I'm trying to be generous for you guys as behalf, you know? And this last character I'll describe to you for this footage is goddess. Her real name is Alexa Mighty. She, her height and weight is vast. She's the ruler of the Alpha Gods and also the goddess of power and beauty. Her official base is the home of the Alpha Gods, known as Asgolympius, which is basically the name is a cross between Asgard and Olympus, but I tried to keep it efficient. Her intelligence level is five brains and a plus, so cosmic levels. She is witty, creative, and confident. She easily handles with any problem. Due to her unique structure, she never worries about having any pockets on her clothes. If you think about it, it's quite efficient. She doesn't mind. She's extremely deadly and powerful, but only when angered. She also hates cliffhangers because, you know, just the experience of suspense just seems a bit irritating for her. She has immense size and strength, extreme beauty, can project bolts of lightning from her hands, and has a vast variety of cosmic power. She is also virtually immortal, can break the fourth wall, and is able to take out any random object from inside of her clothes. You know, she's quite efficient with it, you know, it's like a magic satchel. She has a green right eye and a blue left eye, and has long and luscious golden hair. She may have... An unknown backstory, in a sense, but she is the creator of the universe of Even Yours Truly. When the past universe died out due to it being a test run, she's testing out her powers, she had recreated it by clapping her hands together, causing all life to return to existence, resulting in event known since as the Big Bang. She clapped her hands, and that's what caused the Big Bang, at least in my Leviathan universe's case. She's also the one who blessed Peggy for protecting the twin infants of Adam and Eve Cook, since giving her the official status as the goddess of pregnancies. You know, the goddess of gestation and life, you know? 
She's also the one who saved Zoe from outgrowing the universe by transporting her into her playroom in Asgolympius. Despite her long struggles on enemies like Satana and Cosmic, Alexa still has plenty of confidence from within her core. She wears a white robe that covers most of her body in a proper aspect of the matter. She leads the Alpha Gods and is inspired from God and other cosmic deities. I hope you guys enjoyed all these descriptions of these five new characters that you just barely learned about, and I hope you have decent aspects of the matter. You know how it is. I'm just trying to make it efficient for all ages and keep it inefficient. You know how it is. And um, if you guys want to hear anything else about my Leviathan universe, just type it down in comments down below and see your thoughts of what other stuff you would like to hear about if you have any in the long run. I promise to do some more podcasts in the future to avoid leaving you hanging, just to give you guys a chance to learn more about myself and what I'm capable of and what my creations are capable of and such. And until then, it's Leviathan, and hope you guys have a fine time with your lives and such, and transmission.